Hi, I'm Helen from the University of the West of England. In this video, I'd like to share my thoughts about reconceptualising professional development as a story of teaching development, rather than a list of activities. A copy of my slides, including detailed notes, is available alongside the video. So a key characteristic of expert performance is intentional and purposeful learning and development, as set out in the expertise literature. There are a number of models for this. Deliberate practice is perhaps the most well known and widely used when considering the development of mastery from novice to expert. Progressive problem solving compares experts with experienced non-experts. Schoen identifies reflection as a key characteristic of professional practice. And I think this idea of intentional learning and development is summarised neatly in Perkins' suggestion that expertise is a process of proactive competence. In 2018, I conducted semi-structured interviews with nine National Teaching Fellowship holders. National Teaching Fellowship is a UK-wide award for teaching excellence, so I used it as a proxy for expertise. In these interviews, we explored how these National Teaching Fellowship holders learnt to teach and how they develop their teaching. And their descriptions really kind of fitted with all of these models. But it was particularly striking that they focused their answers on how their teaching evolved, rather than on the particular activities they did to learn and develop. And so what came across was that for them, professional development was an integral part of their teaching rather than an add-on activity. In contrast, often when I'm discussing professional development with colleagues who are, for example, writing about it for a National Teaching Fellowship application, or a Higher Education Academy Fellowship application, or if they're thinking about planning their CPD, their Continuing Professional Development, when I'm talking about it with them, they tend to talk about it as a list of activities training courses, workshops, literature they've read. And there then tends to be a bit of a disconnect from their actual teaching. They find it difficult to articulate how that development opportunity impacted or informed their teaching. So when professional development is conceptualised as a list of activities, it then tends to be considered as an add-on to teaching rather than an integral part of it. And of course, most people are far too busy with their everyday work to do anything additional. In some situations, however, professional development does become a high priority and a necessity. For example, with the COVID-19 pandemic, when courses had to be moved online. So necessity, it seems, can be the mother of professional development. The way I've characterised expertise for teaching in higher education is that learning and development, along with how and what we teach, are all integrated together. In the same way that professional practice, ways of thinking and practicing, ways of thinking and practicing, and learning and development are integrated together in expertise in other fields and disciplines and professions. So building on our National Teaching Fellowship holders' discussion on professional development as a story rather than a list, we might think about professional development for teaching in higher education as an intentional, self-determined and purposeful process of evolving one's teaching, which is informed by evidence gathered from a range of activities. So to conclude, if professional development is integral to teaching practice, then we should be designing educational development to also integrate more closely with practice rather than being an add-on. Shulman discusses this in his article on teaching as community property and suggested that professional development and conversations about teaching need to take place within academic disciplines. Knight also emphasises the need for educational developers to engage with the activity systems and processes of academic practice. So for example, at the University of West of England, we embed professional development into our quality processes so that we support programme teams in enhancing their pedagogy as part of the periodic review of their programmes. Of course, I think there is also a place for development that sits out with a particular programme or department boundary, as long as it's contextualised with key priorities. 
because having an immediate opportunity to use what you've learned means the development is much more engaging and potentially impactful. As noted just now, the, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic meant that there was considerable demand for support for taking teaching online. So we ran a variety of workshops and sharing practice activities, which were really well attended. Similarly, our key strategic priorities of inclusivity, reducing attainment gaps and looking at online assessment provide an opportunity this year for working with colleagues across the university outside of their usual habitats and embedding this development within their teaching practice. My slides, as I said, are available alongside this video, so you can browse the references if they're of interest. And I think this idea of professional development being an intentional process that's about an evolution of teaching informed by evidence, and hence an integral part of teaching itself. I think this is quite a useful concept, so I'd be delighted to discuss it further. So do post in the chat here um, or get in touch if you've got any questions or comments. Thank you.